What's up guys, it's Justin Kahn, your favorite founder's favorite founder, and I'm here to tell you about why I love crypto. How's it going? I'm Justin, Justin Kahn from Justin.tv. What's up guys, it's me, Justin Kahn, your favorite founder's favorite founder. Before we start the video, smash subscribe, like this video, turn on post notifications, subscribe to my Instagram, follow me on Twitter, donate to my Patreon. I'm just kidding, I don't have a Patreon. If you just do the first couple of those things, then I'll love you forever. If you don't do any of them, it's okay. Today I wanna do a video on crypto and why I'm all in on crypto. I wanna make this video because I get asked all the time, like, Justin, do you hold crypto? Are you like advising any crypto projects? Like, what's the deal? Because the whole world seems to be obsessed with crypto now that everyone's trading shit coins on Robinhood nonstop, you know? But I get it, crypto is an exciting new technology. I wanna start first with what my history is with it because it'll probably be instructive to somebody. So first I heard about Bitcoin, like probably 2011, 2012, as like this science project, right? Or this uh, computer science project, I should say. And, you know, kind of an experiment. I was like, eh, that's never gonna work seems like it's illegal and then the first time i actually really bought crypto was you know 2013 there was this massive run up you know bitcoin went from whatever ten dollars or twenty dollars or maybe it was like eighty dollars to like eight hundred dollars i was like you know i need to put some money in this because if it goes to the moon I'm gonna have FOMO forever. And so I put, you know, I didn't have that much money then, but I put a, a chunk of it into Bitcoin. Well, first actually I thought about it. I tried to invest in Coinbase. One friend who was uh, an investor, he worked for various hedge funds. He was telling me like, oh, you know, Bitcoin's gonna be this currency for people that's gonna power the black market. And so, you know, what's the size of it? He was trying to market size the black market. And he was like, it has this potential to grow to the moon or whatever. But instead of investing in Bitcoin, you should invest in Coinbase because the exchanges are gonna capture all the value. And he knew Coinbase was on a YC company. So he's like, Justin, you should go email Brian so we can invest in Coinbase. So I did that. I emailed Brian, said, hey, you know, I'd love to join the Coinbase round. And he was like, well, we've closed the round, but you could invest through Funders Club, which was like a fund that invested in Coinbase that like lets anyone invest in the fund. Uh, he was like, if you want it, would you be interested in investing through Funders Club? And I was like, I don't want to pay these fucking Funders Club guys 20% just to invest in this other startup. So I kind of ignored it, which was very stupid. I should have followed up and just said, hey, like, please let me invest directly or just been like, okay, I'll pay, like, I'll invest in Funders Club. Like, because if you like an angel, angel investments are like 0x or they're like 100x, right? Or 50x. If you really believe in something, the entry point being 20% higher really does not make that much of a difference. I should, have, I should have made that bet. Anyways, I didn't invest in Coinbase, but what I did do was put money onto Coinbase and buy Bitcoin, uh, which was a pretty good look. Of course, at 800, immediately everything crashed like right after I bought it. And I was like, I am the greater fool. I left my coins on Coinbase and I just forgot about the whole thing. Until 2017, four years later, now there's another run up. And at that point, I'm like, okay, there's something here. I don't get what it is, but there's definitely something here. And I'd seen Ethereum also go like, you know, from whatever, $2 to, you know, $200 or something like that that and ethereum is this programmable platform like if bitcoin is like a store value ethereum is this computing platform that's distributed and that started to make sense to me except that it seemed like the amount of transactions that could actually happen on ethereum was extremely low so it like seemed deeply impractical from a technical standpoint but for somehow some reason it was worth a lot you know so at that point i was like okay there's definitely something i'm not getting you know my background i was a programmer but i just didn't really see how anyone was building any applications on this there's something I'm not getting. And so the, what I did was I, I was like, I'm not smart enough. I want to invest in other people who are in this industry. And so I found a fund called Polychain and invested in Polychain, which is, was investing in these new altcoins and like different crypto projects. So did that. And then once again, I kind of forgot about it. And, you know, while 2017 was happening, a couple of friends of mine were starting crypto projects. And uh, there was one called Audius that uh, was started by a former co-founder of mine. In the music space, they're trying to make a decentralized music platform, uh, kind of like SoundCloud, but where uh, the whole platform is decentralized. So the Audis project actually got started and they worked out of my house uh, for the first couple of months. And I became an advisor of the project, but I have to say that like, while I love the mission, I was still very skeptical on the technical aspects. Like, could this actually work? And you know, then I forgot about it. They went on, raised a bunch of money, uh, moved into a real office and I forgot about it. And what's happened this year in 2021, you know, basically three years later, is that some of these projects that are targeting consumers 
have actually started to work. You know, Audi's project has over 5 million monthly active users and they've released their token and their token's getting traded on exchanges right now. And the whole ecosystem is working. What's most important actually about Audi is the whole thing works technically, which is something that I really didn't think would work. I had trouble understanding how technically something that was like a consumer app would actually scale if it was completely decentralized. And what they've done, there've been a number of breakthrough innovations. Um, I won't make this a technical video, we don't have to go into it now, but there's been a number of breakthrough innovations in blockchains that have enabled like a much greater scale than was possible in 2018. That was one part. And the other component is the UX. Like people have figured out, you know, if you use MetaMask or any of these like Ethereum wallets or anything like that, it's like super confusing. Like you have to download this browser plugin and then you have to like copy and paste these addresses, very confusing. The Audis guys developed this username password wallet called Hedgehog where you just like, it looks like you're logging into a normal site, right? So you don't have to know anything about crypto. You can use the entire thing without knowing anything about crypto. What I've come to understand is crypto itself is actually then the idea of decentralized ownership is actually a way to incentivize people to get on to a new platform. It's like the old school, the, the web 2.0 version of everything was like some friend of mine started a company, like let's say it's Airbnb or uh, Uber or something like that. And they figured out like, here's a marketplace to create. And then they started, they worked hard, they raised a lot of money, they built that marketplace. And now they get to rent seek all transactions on that market, like 20%, forever. And I guess there's a philosophical question on, is that the way we want the world to work? We have some tech oligarch who's able to control an entire market and all the value is being created by the buyers and sellers. Like the people who come and purchase on the marketplace and the people who sell in the marketplace create all the value, right? They're doing all the work. They're spending all the money. And most of these products are actually quite simple to implement. And yet we have this equilibrium state where there is one like gatekeeper that actually controls the marketplace. What I love about decentralized protocols is that the marketplace can be owned over time. You can use the decentralized pro protocol as a way to distribute the ownership of the marketplace. So you have the participants of the marketplace owning it over time. I have another friend who created this company called Brain Trust, uh, which is really cool. It's like Upwork, but crypto Upwork. It's like Upwork with distributed ownership. So you have all these freelancers, you know, programmers, designers, product managers who are coming and doing work for big companies all around the world. And if they do it on Upwork, well, up there, Upwork takes like 20% of everything that, of all their transactions, which to you as an individual person is a lot. Uh, what I love about Brain Trust is they take 0%. And so they charge no fees to you, the freelancer, and the way it works is basically, if you do work on the platform over time, you get some ownership in the platform in the form of B-Trust tokens over time. I think that's really incredible. That's an incredible new paradigm for the future that I really wanna be part of. So long story short, I'm super bullish on crypto and I'm really excited. I'm ideating crypto projects myself right now, uh, thinking about things to work on. Uh, and I am really, really bullish for this decentralized future especially with consumer applications. So if you're a real builder and you wanna build in crypto, then the crypto winter is, it should be irrelevant to you. Some of the best projects get started when nothing, you know, when there's no interest in crypto. And I think like for every real builder, this is true whether it's crypto or not, for every real builder, it's great to get started during the recession, right? Like when people aren't as interested and excited about it, but you're a real believer, uh, that's when it's like the competition is low and if you can get a little bit of funding, if you can stay scrappy, bootstrap, you know, you can be positioned for the next upswing. So that's what something like Audio State, that's basically what every crypto project in the last three years has done. Uh, it's what my friends at Airbnb did, you know, they started during a recession when everyone said it's the worst time possible to start a company, but really it was a great time for them. So I think for real builders, a uh, crypto recession is actually good for them. Another question that people often have is how do you tell legitimate projects from crypto scams? If first off, if you're finding out about a crypto project because your favorite rapper is tweeting about how it's gonna go to the moon, it's probably a scam. Also, if it has moon, the name of the coin, it's probably a scam. With a lot of these projects, it's just like it is with startups. You wanna know who's behind it, are these legitimate entrepreneurs, what's their story, and uh, that's really what you're investing and in buying into. Do your research, don't just buy random crypto projects. I know it's a pain in the ass, but reading the white paper is probably a good place to start. If you're wanna, gonna invest money into a project and you're not willing to read the white paper describing it, that may be a sign that you shouldn't be YOLOing your money into some random shit coin. It might be. I don't know, I'm not an investment professional, so this is not investment advice. For the rest of this video, I got my friend Ronil, founder of Audius Project, one of the 
biggest consumer, actually I think it is the biggest consumer crypto uh, project out there uh, to do a quick interview. So here's Ronil. All right, yeah, well, Ronil, what's up? It's it's good to see you. Good to see you too, Justin. It's been it's been a minute. How are you? I am. I'm doing super good. I'm doing so good. And it seems like you guys are doing really well too. What a year or so it's been since uh, since COVID began. And uh, it, yeah, things things have been uh, things have been really good for us. So. Um, you know, today about four and a half million people listen to uh, music on Audius every month. Uh, about a hundred thousand people have uh, uploaded stuff. Um, and we're just we're just doing our thing. I, I think uh, uh, it's really cool. You know, I, I imagine you all saw this with uh, uh, Justin TV and and later with Twitch. Like when network effects kind of start to work around a business like this, it, it very quickly like runs away from you right in a in kind of a great way but also like a, a somewhat scary way but uh it's it's been it's been a lot of fun i got to know you a little bit when you i think at my house like i had this home office you'd come around uh this is probably four years ago plus you know there were a lot of startups around it was very silicon valley like and you know that was actually when you were working as a as an investor right and then you went on to create audius project so tell me how did audius start what were you thinking and what what is Audius? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um so yeah, Justin, I think we met uh uh when I was at Kleiner and uh one of my partners at Kleiner, Anjane, uh uh was looking at investing in uh the beat drop at that time. This was like way, <laughs> way back, right? Um and uh yeah, we came and hung out in your in your dining room and then later uh that dining room is where Audius started. So Audius, the the project that uh we're working on now, um, is a digital streaming service that connects fans directly with artists and exclusive new music. Um there's kind of a through line there going all the way back to both the beat drop and uh, the artist union, the work that uh, uh, Justin and, and uh, my co-founder at, at Audius Ronadu in, in 2018 or so uh, worked on together. So um, yeah, it was, it was kind of cool to, to be able to like, you know, philosophically a bit, at least carry the torch forward. Uh, uh, you know, built in a different way, of course. But I think the the mission of these uh, projects ended up being, you know, quite quite similar, right? And I think that was what we uh, we first kind of connected about, right? And and got really excited about uh, going going after this opportunity, right? Uh, which is, you know. Yeah, I, I would always broadly summarize it as as connecting uh, fans and artists directly, right? To to you know exchange content, exchange money with one another, um, all of these things. Um, uh, that kind of direct bit really being the key differentiator uh, around Audius because it's fully decentralized from like SoundCloud and and some of the things that have come before. Yeah, there's so much uh, there. Like I I've, I've always been passionate about connecting creators with with the audience. I, obviously Twitch is built on that that idea and enabled this huge like new form of, of content creator like the streamer to rise up and like do that as their job, right? And in the music industry, it always seemed completely backwards where you had the gatekeepers like kind of controlling access to this large audience and then they would basically, you know, own the artists because of that. And artists had relatively few ways of owning their audience and communicating directly with their audience. And that seemed broken. So, you know, back in the, I guess in 2014, I started working on the, some projects around this with, with Randadu about like, how could you distribute music online in different ways or like get people directly connected with fans in different ways. And so we, we played around with a bunch of those projects like the Artist Union and, and the Drop and that was fun, but we never really figured anything out that, that really worked. And, um, and then you guys came along and, and so tell me, like, what are the problems that you're trying to solve with the existing platforms like SoundCloud or Spotify, where people, you know, they've gotten quite big and they're kind of the way that people that dominate how people listen to music now. Yeah, yeah, and and that actually, the answer to this is really what was, what inspired the idea around Audius. So like kind of, I guess, simultaneously to to you and Ronadu's work in, in this area, like my co-founder at Audius Forest and, and I were both, um, you know, just big electronic music fans, right? And we started seeing all of our favorite creators getting kicked off of SoundCloud at, at that time for the most part, right? Um, and uh, uh, we kind of, you know, started to ask ourselves, I guess, like, why was this happening? And it was really just from this very uh, uh, personal, visceral place of like all this great content. We 
we had curated by like favoriting it and reposting it and whatever kept disappearing right and it was like oh i like you know it's like building a castle out of sand right like when you you know build up these great playlists and everything else and then everything just disappears and you don't really know why so we kind of started to ask ourselves i guess like you know both why were those things happening but also like why don't artists own their own means of distribution right um and and that was sort of that genesis of this idea that ultimately evolved into uh into what audius is today um but if i had to summarize like broadly the problems that that soundcloud and, and spotify um and and others face which I, I think are quite numerous um the root of almost all of them comes down to this uh kind of separation of and and kind of um intermediation if you will of that relationship between the artist and the fan um so on on spotify for example you as an artist can email uh your your fans once a year if you are a big enough artist <laughs> they they allow you to message your fans one time per year and uh the 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 format of that email is so prescribed it's like a specific template that you are allowed to it's, it's basically made to announce releases of new content right but but yeah. um, you have to fit within this like very precise uh, thing. So as an artist, you don't know who your fans are, how they found you, how to reach them or like market to them or, or anything like that. But what's interesting is there are other people in the music ecosystem who, who have that data, right? So there have been cases, for example, of uh, uh, artists effectively getting front run in label negotiations where the label knows that an artist is breaking out before the artist themselves knows that they're breaking out because they don't have real time streaming data coming back. Um, they just don't know. They like they, they it, it's just you know all of these things that we take for granted in in traditional tech that like you can slap a, a Google Analytics tag on your website and understand like basically everything that's that's happening right in music. It's just it's kind of like it reminds me of the stories people tell about how they tried to do um, uh, attribution for marketing in like the 90s. 90s, right, where you would have like a test market and release an ad in that market and then try to measure a difference in kind of the uptake of your product in that market versus the other market. I mean, markets being like physical geos typically, right? Um, yeah. uh, it's just crazy that music still behaves that way when all of this data could could be accessible. It just isn't. Yeah, for all of those reasons, you know, in, in 2015 or so, when we first had this idea, um, we, we shelved it because we felt that like from a technology perspective, it wasn't possible to, to build this, right? We would have had to be both uh, our own blockchain and our own like file system of, of some sort, right? Um, but both of those problems were fixed in the intervening years. Um, and, and in late 2017, early 2018, when the timing worked out for us to work on something, we we kind of you know tried building a prototype of this and we're like oh i wonder if it, it could work today and that you know heading down that path actually is what put us on a crash course with with you at that time and and when we first started engaging as as well so so yeah i, I don't know if like you know folks uh, in the in the audience know this but like audius started in justin's living room right which is which is pretty wild uh for the first six months or so of of the company before we had an office and before we had uh finished our first round of funding we we were working in in uh, Justin's living room, and it was I mean it was a lot of fun. It was like a, a very productive time for us, but also uh, uh, you know it's it's crazy to think about like you know just how fortunate we are to have so many great folks uh, you know like like yourself in the broader ecosystem that have supported us and and enabled us to get to where we are today. Thank you, I appreciate you saying that. That. I mean, it's it's an incredible story, and one of the things that I a couple thoughts came to mind was like one is you guys are part of this wave of people of creators online becoming able to directly connect with their customers right and their fans and that's empowering this you know what's interesting is it's giving more power to the people who are successful creators you know the head of the tail it's also empowering this long way you know this large wave of long tail creators to actually get started like people who would maybe never be able to be signed by a a, a label or, or get their music on spotify and the other thing that i think is really fascinating is you know there's been a lot of skepticism around crypto projects and you know they're saying okay there's these tokens that may be worth a lot but they're not like real right like there's no real software or anything but audius actually is like you can use it as an 
as a fan right now, right? Like, or as, as a musician. So can you talk about like, what is the product actually? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the product looks and feels like uh, what you would think a traditional music player is like, right? You can go to audius.co, you can search for any artist you want to, or you can go to like the trending page of uh, of the product, just click play on on anything and it'll start playing um there's no sort of knowledge of crypto or of any of of these other things necessary right and and uh i think the vast majority of our users neither know nor care that crypto is behind the scenes right they just want to hear cool music and uh there's i think because of the way Audius is, is structured and because of how excited some artists have been, there's a lot of music on Audius that doesn't exist anywhere else, right? So that is what's driving all of this engagement, right? Is people wanting to hear cool stuff that they can't hear anywhere else. They like, you know, they could care less that it's decentralized and, and crypto and, and all this, right? Uh, but those things were necessary, I think, to let us get that exclusive content. So it's kind of an interesting, like, you know, means to an end for us is how I describe it, right? Like the product here is a user owned and operated streaming network, not like a crypto thing, right? Um, uh, uh, but we needed these tools to make it possible. So the tools behind the scenes, the crypto part of it, means that you guys don't control, you know, you're, you're not disintermediating the artists from their fans. So they have like the direct connection. It also means they get paid, right? Based on listens yes. and that's all handled by the network in a way that's transparent to both you and, you know, you don't have anything to do with that. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? That's exactly right. Uh, the, the analogy or, or sort of the example uh, we like to give uh, uh, folks when talking about this is that if our company shut down tomorrow, the company that built uh, the first version of Audius, everything would keep working. Um, like there's no part of uh, this system that depends on us or our continued existence. Uh, and I'm not saying we are shutting down. We're going to be around <laughs> for a long is... time. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it almost like uh, uh, it's so it's so different from traditional company building, right? Uh, which is kind of you know what I I did a lot of it at Kleiner, and and you know I know you have a long history of as well, right? Like our our job almost is to make ourselves as useless as as possible, um, and kind of like you know not. Uh, not be any part of, you know, uh, you know, to have this network or system be dependent on us, like at all for, for any part of this, because that's, that's what means from the artist's perspective that the rules can't be changed on them. Right. And the, um, the fan base that they've built here can't be taken away from them. Um, though all of those kind of like value adds that have gotten artists so excited are, are kind of like fundamentally uh, uh, dependent on, you know, us kind of like not mattering at a certain point, which is which is kind of cool. That's super interesting because SoundCloud almost ran out of money many times and was about to, you know, it was like people were worried it would shut down. I mean, they're probably big enough that someone would buy it. But, you know, that's a very real problem. And then with, with SoundCloud, if SoundCloud shut down, the internet would lose this huge library of content that's like pretty... You know, it's an incredible library of content, especially around you know, hip hop and electronic music, a lot of, you know, internet genres. And so yeah, that's, that's something that's really interesting and fascinating about crypto is that the whole thing is self-sustaining and has, you guys are developing, you know, maybe what comes next with, with the features, but it's, it's really an open source project that's owned by the people who are participating in it. And that's like kind of like a concept economically that just you know does has never existed before yeah it's uh it, it's so fun man it, it, it i think that at its essence what you just said there is exactly gets at the core of what i think is so interesting in in crypto creates like the means to kind of monetize these public goods and public utilities and structure them in a way that like they are economically self-sustaining without the need for subsidy or or any other sort of monetization model can you tell for the layman like how does the token work and like how does how is it like behind the scenes like what's going on with audience that gets artists paid and like you know from from the fans engaging with them so um the audience token uh, or the the name for it is audio um uh, it kind of serves three functions within the Audius ecosystem. Um, one is securing the network. Um, so there are basically people in the community that host content and host metadata and, and things like this. Um, they're able to kind of like 
use this token to operate those businesses and earn money from the network in exchange for providing that service. Um, uh, the token also kind of governs feature access. So as an artist, you can like earn these tokens by contributing content and, and other things, curation, things like that. But uh, you have to actually like earn a certain number of them to be able to access certain features uh, within the product. So there are some features that consume more resources from the network or, or things like this. And then governance is the last bit. So those tokens actually uh, can be used to vote on any and all changes made to the network. Um, that's how changes are, are made basically, right? Like our, our uh, uh, team working at, at uh, our company is no longer able to kind of like, you know, update the code or, or do anything, um, anything like that. The community actually has to like opt into any change um, that is that is being made on, on their behalf. But one thing that's you know, conspicuously missing there is is payments. Um, so the way that payments and monetization for artists more broadly works in Audius is actually not via the token. As an artist, you can charge basically for access to your content or access to things like your artist fan club or or um, depending on how the artist wants to design their monetization strategy, there's kind of various tools available to, um, to structure those things. And then uh, a percentage of every one of those payments made from fan to artist goes actually back to uh, users of that token. So that's basically how the token kind of uh, uh, factors in here. Um, so as an artist, effectively by earning some of those tokens through contributing content and other things, you're helping to operate the whole network, but you are also earning a small percentage of every transaction happening across the network too um, through that. So there's kind of this neat... That, that's why I think that co-op analogy is is a good one here. It's sort of like as an, as an artist, artist, you earn your way into this co-op and you start to get like more and more exposure to all of the other content that exists in this ecosystem too. Gotcha. So it's kind of like they are earning equity. If this was a traditional company, it's like the artist would have some equity in the outcome of the company uh, that would pay, that pays, you know, dividends off the revenue stream of the company. In this case, token holders, they're part owners of the whole network. And so like all of the revenue of the network you know, they get some future share of that. That's that's exactly right. So it's it's uh, a little bit different from uh, equity mechanically, just because you have to do work with the token to earn um, uh, earn value back from it. Like you either have to run a node or contribute content or, or do these other things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think like, you know, the, the kind of like tagline we, we share on this is like, don't just own your masters as an artist, like own own the platform, right? Own your means of distribution because like then it can't, you know, your ability to monetize those masters can't be taken away from you, right? Yeah, so it's it's almost like the artists, they own Spotify. Like if Spotify yes. was, yeah. or it's like how t they wanted to do it with title, except that was owned by like Jay-Z and maybe like a few other artists, you know, this is like all artists can own part of Spotify and own part of the platform and participate in because they're making the platform successful. They should have a piece of that. That's exactly right. Um, I mean, think about like a, a sort of, you know, any content network, it's only as valuable as the content that's on it, right? And and uh, uh, I think traditional networks uh, like SoundCloud and and uh, YouTube and and whatnot have kind of like taken that for granted a little bit, right? With the way that they kind of allow creators to monetize, right? Um, that's why I love so much like what you all managed to do with Twitch, right? Where like far higher percentage than anywhere else of like subscriptions, badges, everything else that people are buying, make it directly back to uh, those creators, which is so cool, right? Um, and it's interesting in music, there were just a number of like structural issues around the industry that prevented a similar model from working in a centralized fashion. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a decentralized fashion, I think we have been able to, uh, uh, to overcome some of those, uh, some of those issues and, and allow that kind of direct engagement from artists and fans to happen with one another. Yeah, like when I upload this video to YouTube, <laughs> I'm not getting any share of YouTube. YouTube is going to say, okay, you have the right to like get you know, your $2 yeah. RPM or whatever. You know, we're going to pay you like two bucks for this video. Or maybe if get when it gets millions of views, they're going to pay us like, you know, whatever, hundreds of dollars maybe. But we're not really getting anything long-term from it for making YouTube. And and Audius is kind of like, I guess if if that was like the 1.0 version of sharing content online, this is like the maybe the 2.0 where the content creators own uh, what's happening like the, pro the, the the value of their platform that they create. So what if you're a, an artist right now, like what, how do you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it sounds like there's 100,000 people who have uploaded content to, to Audius. Is that right? Like, how do you, yeah. if you're an artist right now, how do you get involved? Like, how do you participate? 
you know, crypto is super confusing to so many people. Like what's this, what's the simple version of how they get started? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so all you have to do is go to audius.co, um, click, uh, uh, sign up, make an account. You can use a username and, and password. You don't have to know anything about crypto. You don't have to, uh, uh, kind of, um, you know, have, have like spent any time playing with, with that stuff. Um, and then you just click, uh, the upload button in the left side panel and you can drag a track in and, and upload it. Um, so I, I think, you know, it, it just, from a product perspective, this looks and feels like any other, um, sort of like audio sharing distribution platform, uh, uh, if you will. Right. Um, but what's pretty neat here is behind the scenes, you're actually, you're, as a user, your browser is going and talking to this broader network and doing all this stuff kind of uh, behind the scenes for you that makes your content like far more robust and resilient than than it would be uh, otherwise. Cool. And if you're a user, how do you, or a listener, like a fan, how do you interact with the product and how how do you use Audius? Yeah. So you can uh, uh, show up to any page on Audius and just click play on on the piece of content and start playing um it depends i guess on uh whether the artist has like chosen to to monetize or not monetize that piece of content um depending on on kind of that that fork uh in the path like you know you either can just click play and like everything just works and you don't uh you don't know anything's happening um if an artist has chosen to monetize a piece of content as a fan you would either be prompted to put in a credit card to top up a balance uh within the ecosystem basically like the mechanics of that or it's it's depositing um uh kind of these like us dollar equivalent tokens into your wallet and then you can use those to to pay for content every time you listen or you can purchase a, a subscription if the artist has opted into that so yeah from that user experience perspective uh, uh same kind of thing it's it's meant to really be welcoming and inviting to folks from all different backgrounds and level of technical understanding or, or otherwise right like you shouldn't have to uh uh to know how cryptography works and how all these things work to be able to like listen to cool music right that's that, that's like yeah. the, the like the primary uh the primary thing here so we've gone to like very great lengths to try to um, obscure that complexity and just allow audius to map into kind of the existing mental models that people have right for how how these products work well are people going out there and buying audius like audio tokens and like why would they do that yeah yeah so um it, it's been interesting to kind of see folks behavior towards this so folks are buying uh audius tokens to uh access some features within audius so if they want to shortcut the process of like earning those tokens to unlock features um they could they could go buy the tokens instead and stake them to to get um uh, to get access to those things. Um, and then there are also a number of folks that are wanting to operate nodes in, in the ecosystem right now, um, because they, by running a node, you can, uh, the network will pay you for that service. Um, and, and the revenue from that is, is fairly generous. Folks are, you know, you can almost think of the token in that dimension serving this function as like a business license or like a taxi medallion in, in a sense, right? It's kind of like this, uh, transferable right to do work within the Audius ecosystem system. Cool. That's awesome. So it's uh, you're empowering people not just to be in the business of like creating the content, but you're creating like a uh, businesses of operating Audius itself, like the, the license. That's exactly to right. Audius. Yeah. That's how there's no company sitting at the middle of this, right? Like someone still has to host all the content and like index the metadata that's here and like do all of these things. Um, but uh, through these kind of like crypto economic incentives, uh, our community ends up providing those services, right? Our community, uh, uh, the Audius community serves us effectively the marketing team of, of the product, right? Like Audius, uh, the company is only uh, uh, 15 people. There are 15 people that, that work on this right now, um, our company, but there's a community of, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of, of people now that are basically all working together to make this thing more valuable, uh, which is which is pretty cool. That's incredible. Uh, any uh, final thoughts or other other things you want to add about Audius? I think the only thing I, I would add is uh, sort of, you know, more broadly with respect to kind of like crypto, blockchain, NFTs, all these things. Um, I think it's easy to get lost in the kind of like 
technicalese of of all of this, right? But it's really not like, you know, kind of in, in the same way, I guess, that like the internet in, I don't know, 1992 or 1993 probably felt this way to the people using it, right? Um, I think that's kind of the phase of things that we are at in, in uh, you know, crypto and for audience for that matter, right? So like the people who show up early in these communities and do the work uh, uh, often ends up end up kind of being the ones that um, being able to capture the most value as these networks grow over time. Um, so yeah, I, I, all I can say to folks is like, you know, if, if you're not spending time yet in, in this broader crypto ecosystem, uh, I would definitely encourage you to, uh, to hop in and, and start poking around. Uh, one last thing I thought of, what is the most hyped track on Audius right now? <laughs> oh man, it changes every day, every week. Let me, I'll, I'll pull up Audius right now and, and tell you. Um, there have definitely been some like kind of just surreal moments for for our team um, when you know there were folks that uploaded things to Audius that we just like never in a million years dreamed uh, uh, they would. Now that seems to be happening every day. Um, so yeah, the number one track on Audius actually is like a um, hour and twenty minute long set by Diplo higher ground collection um so it's just like kind of a long form set that he uh he put together for uh for that show um but yeah it ends up it like changes every every day every couple days there's a kind of this like decay in um uh you know how valuable each play is depending on how old the content is uh we actually kind of modeled it after reddit's like upvoting um, yeah because it's all open source like the way that they calculate that there's this pretty neat like decay function basically the you know all, all that that does is it waits um, you know, upvotes or plays or engagements from kind of like higher value or harm, higher karma accounts more highly. Um, but then uh, over time, as that content gets older, uh, it takes like more and more and more engagement to keep it at the same level. It like naturally yeah. kind of falls off. Um, yeah. I love that. Well, maybe we can figure out how to put this tra the tra like a little snippet of the track in the video. All right, guys, that was the video. If you like it, you know what to do. Smash subscribe and we're going to the moon. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, turn on post notifications, so on and so forth. You get the drill. All right, I'll see you guys next week. And until then, Godspeed.